Hello and welcome to Tanya Yoga. So today's practice is going to be a Hatha style practice full of poses to open through our chest, to stretch through the front of our shoulders and the front of our hips, thinking about a logical progression towards Urva Dhanurasana or upward facing bow or wheel. Call it what you will. So we're really going to think about that logical progression. So we're going to think about stretching the front of our body, strengthening the back of our body, really putting lots of attention into our glute muscles, which really help to protect our spine when we do any form of back bend or chest opener. And also that range of mobility that we need through the shoulders. So we're going to start really easy, really simple, on your knees in hero pose. So you can bring your, your knees to more or less hip width, your feet also hip width, and sit yourself down back on your heels. So here just nice and comfortable. If it's not comfortable, you might want to blanket under the tops of your feet between your knees. You might want to sit up on a block. What I want you to feel is that you're getting some stretch, some activation through the front of your quadricep muscles. So here it's very easy to relax and slump. But what I want you to do is I want you to turn on and I want you to bring, bring your spine forwards along with your belly button, your shoulders gently backwards and your sternum forwards. So you feel like you're sat with good posture. Now is your time to start to think, to connect with your breath. Try and release tension in your face, tension in your arms, in your hands. Take the energy away from where you don't need it. And just breathe. So today, throughout this practice, I'm going to mention quite a few times, see what it feels like if you turn on your glutes in this position. So what our glutes do when we uh, try and put um, a bigger curve or a bigger arch in our back is they protect the spine because they rotate the pelvis to help try and align your spine. So what I'm going to keep saying as we go through the practice is turn on your glutes and see what sensation that gives you. Normally it will take away a little bit of the curve out of your spine and it will direct the sensation more into your upper body, into your chest, which is what we want. Never when we're doing a back bend do we want to feel a pinch or a collapse or pain in our lower back. That's a definite no, no. So even here you should be feeling that your spine is relatively straight and you can notice if you turn on your glutes what will generally tend to happen is that your belly button will go a little bit back, your pelvis will rotate a little bit tiny backwards and you'll feel a little bit less of a curve in your spine. It's subtle, it's very small sensations when we get further into more expansive positions then you'll notice it more. So now what I want you to do, as I mentioned, we're going to work on our shoulder mobility. So I want you to interlink your fingers and I want you to show you the palms of your hands forwards. So really try and bring your shoulders forwards in front of your spine. So you feel how your shoulder blades spread across your back. You're pushing your hands forwards, but you're still trying to keep your spine straight. We're not rounding through the back. We're literally just trying to push the shoulders and the arms forward. And I want you to keep that push, keep that energy that's pushing your hands forwards as you start to lift your hands up. So you want to feel like your um, deltoid muscles or the muscles around the outside of your shoulders come up towards your ears and that you open through your heart. So keep pushing, keep lifting. Obviously we're still breathing. Really keep lifting. Try and take your hands all the way up to the ceiling. You should be feeling the stretch through the front of your wrists, through your armpits. Maybe some compression into the tops of the shoulders. And as you exhale, gently bring your hands back down towards the center. Release your hands. A few little rolls in your shoulders. Release any tension. And now what I want you to do is I want you to bring your right hand off towards the edge, off to the side, fingertips on the floor. It's not really there to support lots of weight, it's to help your alignment, tiny little bit of balance. Inhale, lift that left hand up. And now as you exhale, start to reach out towards the right hand side. It's very tempting to put lots of weight onto that right hand, but I want you to support more of the weight through your core with your spine. 
So remember that right, hair, right hand is there for maybe a tiny little bit of support, more just to help your alignment as opposed to just kind of collapsing out onto that right hand side. We need to keep the spine strong. And now with your next exhalation, what I want you to do is I want you to slow all of the palm of your hand and now your elbow, now you can put the weight in the arm. So now we get more stretch, more length, there's a little bit less control, there's a little bit less um, maybe length in the spine, but you're getting all of that stretch through the left side of your body. Now as you inhale, come up. And as you exhale, left hand out towards the side. For now, just the fingertips, strengthen the spine, don't collapse in the left hand side, reach that right hand up, really reach, try and get the stretch with your strength, not so much um, the, pos the pose or the position that your body's in, but more the strength, and lift that right hand up. So you're feeling all the gaps between the ribs on your right hand side, remember the left hand is just there touching the floor gently. You know where we're going to go, we're going to go down towards the left in a second, so you can enjoy the stretch then, but for now be strong. So now nice and soft, as you exhale, lower the palm of your left hand and then start to bend your elbow. Your elbow might arrive to the floor, it might not. Try and keep your body in one line. So you keep the alignment with your forearm and your upper body. Try and make sure that the right glute stays on the heel, it doesn't come off too, too up, up too high. Keep reaching with that right hand. As you inhale, assist with the arm to come back up. And as you exhale, bring your hands down to heart center. Roll the shoulders a couple of times once again. And now nice and gentle, bring your hands down towards the mat and carefully and slowly start to let your weight come forward over to your hands. And then we're gonna lift the knees away from the floor. Place your feet towards the back of the mat to find your first downward dog. So here in downward dog, you're going to feel that relief, that sensation of stretch in the back of your knees after being sat with your knees bent for so long. You're pushing the floor away with your hand, you're rotating the shoulders externally, you're allowing the neck to go where it feels comfortable. In your own time, start to walk your feet forwards. There's no rush, you feel each foot come down towards the floor. You're very aware, you're very conscious of how you're progressing slowly towards the front of your mat. And when you arrive at the front of your mat, I want you to have your feet at more or less hip width. I want you to soften your knees and stand. Inhale, hands up towards the sky. And as you exhale, bring your hands behind your back and interlink your fingers. Now I want you to roll open through your heart, feel the opening in the chest and feel that your hips come gently forwards. So you might be noticing that there's a bit of compression, there's a bit of a, an arch forming in your lower back. Squeeze your glutes and notice what happens. Really turn on your glutes, really squeeze and feel. You should feel that your hips maybe go forward a tiny little bit further, but they also, your pelvis rotates backwards and you take a tiny little bit of a curve out of the back. So that's the sensation that we're going to be looking for when we're doing all of our back. So for now, you're squeezing your glutes, your shoulder blades are coming together, the front of your shoulders are opening, your spine is long, and your feet are pushing through the floor. For three, two, and one. Slowly release. Shake out any tension. Move the elbows, move the wrists, move the knees a little bit. Lift the shoulders up and down again, some circles. They could be fast, they could be slow. Do whatever feels good for you. We're going to go through a few rounds of classic sun salutation and we're going to do some slight little variations when, our, when we're in our lunges to start to get a little bit more opening through our chest and a little bit more strength into the front of our legs. As you exhale, release the tension, let your shoulders drop. And with your next inhale, reach the hands all the way up. And as you exhale, hands heart center forward, fold. Hands to the floor, inhale, right leg up, halfway lift. And as you exhale, place that right foot back down on the mat. As you inhale, reach the fingertips 
forwards. Exhale. Strong front leg, long straight back. Inhale. Exhale, hands to the floor. Inhale, plank, left leg back. Exhale, drop the knees, bend the elbows, chest and chin to the mat. Inhale, lower the hips. Strong back, lift the upper body for cobra. And as you exhale, tuck the toes under the weight, comes back into downward dog. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, left leg up, try and keep the hips square. And as you exhale, place the left foot between your hand and lower the back knee. If you don't arrive first time with the left foot, you can place it there. And as you inhale, reach your fingertips forwards. Again, try and think about creating a straight line between your hands, your shoulders, your hips and your knee. Long back. You should be stretching a little bit through the front of your hip, particularly on the right side. Exhale, hands to the floor. And as you inhale, lift that back leg high in the sky, strong hamstring. As you exhale, feet together, forward fold. Inhale, unroll, tiny little back bend when you get to the top. Exhale, hands, heart center. Keep squeezing the glutes, inhale, reach up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift, lift the left leg. Exhale, place the left foot back on the mat. Hips are square. Inhale, reach the hands forwards. So the same as before, you've got lots of weight on that front leg. You're trying to make length between your hands and your back heel. You're pushing your left heel back. You're trying to keep the hips square. Front leg is super strong. Exhale. Inhale, exhale, hands to the floor, some weight in the fingers, inhale, plank, exhale, drop the knees, rotate the pelvis, bend the elbows, chest and chin to the mat, inhale, cobra, strong back, not arms, as you exhale, weight goes backwards, downward dog, inhale, exhale, Inhale, right leg back up in the sky behind you. Exhale, right foot between the hands, lower the back knee. Inhale, reach the fingertips forwards. Strong front leg. Remember, think about that straight line. You're trying to make uh, that your, the line between your hands and your back knee one straight line through the sh joint of the shoulder and the hip. Exhale, hands to the floor. Inhale, lift the back leg. Exhale, feet together, forward fold. Inhale, unroll. Exhale, hands, heart center. Inhale, hands out towards the side, big circle, reach up. Exhale, hands out towards the side, fold at the hips like a hinge. You can imagine a swan diving. Inhale, halfway lift, lift the right leg. Exhale, place that right foot back on the floor behind you. Inhale, reach the fingertips forwards and up. So now a little bit more stretch in your right hip. Not so much uh, weight over that front leg, but you're starting to feel a little bit more opening through your chest. Hands all the way up. The right heel pushes back. With your next exhalation, hands down. Inhale, plank. Exhale, knees down. Rotate through the pelvis. Bend the elbows, chest and chin. Inhale, lift the upper body, hips down for cobra. And as you exhale, tuck the toes under, push the weight back into downward dog. Inhale, make downward dog yours. Exhale. Inhale, left leg high in the sky. Exhale, left foot forward, lower the right knee. Inhale, reach the fingers forwards and up. So now you're going to really start to get that stretch through the front of your right hip flexor. 
your shoulders are strong, you're trying to really rotate through your arms, almost your palms look backwards. Lifting through your chest, keep your glutes engaged, protect your lower back. Exhale, hands either side of the front foot. Inhale, lift the back leg. Exhale, feet to the front of the mat, forward fold. Inhale, reach all the way up, little back bend. Again, exhale, hands out towards the side, fold of the hips like a hinge. Inhale, halfway lift, lift the left leg. Exhale, left foot and knee, left foot, sorry, back to the floor. Inhale, reach the fingertips forward and up. Just to reassure, you've got that back knee up this first way through. So you might be thinking, why are we doing the stronger one with our knee lifted the first time? Because it requires less flexibility in the hip flexor. So we're stretching gently, we're progressing. Reach the hands up, length through your belly. Exhale, hands down. Inhale, plank. Exhale, drop the knees, chest and chin. Inhale, cobra. Exhale, downward dog. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, right leg up. Exhale, like a feather, place the right foot forward and this time lower the back knee. Inhale, reach the fingertips forward and up. Get the stretch through the left side of your hips, the front of your quadricep. Squeeze your glutes, protect your lower back. Try and feel that your belly button is lifting up and your pelvis, your tailbone is dropping down. Exhale, hands to the floor. Inhale, lift the back leg. Exhale, feet to the front of the mat, forward fold. Inhale, unroll, stand up, hands out to the side and up. Exhale, hands, heart center. Inhale, lift the hands up. And as you exhale, palms forwards, elbows out towards the side, stand like a cactus. So now what I want you to do, just standing here, I want you to keep your bum turned on, pushing your pelvis gently forward, and try and draw your elbows towards each other backwards. So you should feel a bit of stretch across the front of your shoulders. You're squeezing your shoulder blades together. You could imagine there's a walnut between your shoulder blades and you're trying to open the walnut. Pause. Three. Two. And one. Inhale, straighten the arms, hands up towards the sky, interlink the fingers. Stretch the armpits, and as you exhale, hands, heart center, forward, forward. Hands to the floor, inhale, lift the right leg. Exhale, place the right foot down. Inhale, reach the hands forwards, up, and if you've got a little bit more space, back. Be careful with your spine. Now you really need to start to turn on your glutes to protect your lower back. You're opening through your heart. You're thinking about touching the wall behind you. Your back leg stays strong. Remember, lower your tailbone, lift your belly button. Exhale, hands down to the floor. Inhale, plank. Exhale, lower the knees, chest and chin. Inhale, cobra. Exhale, downward dog. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, left leg up. Exhale, left foot forward, right knee down. Same as we did previously. Inhale, hands forwards, up and back. Strong back. No pinching, no pain in your lower back. Open through your heart. Reach with your fingers. You can do what feels comfortable with your neck and head. Exhale, hands to the floor. Inhale, lift the back leg. Exhale, feet to the mat, forward fold. Inhale, unroll and lift. Exhale, directly hands, heart center, forward fold. Inhale, hands to the floor, lift the back leg, left leg, sorry. 
Exhale, place the left foot to the mat. Inhale, reach the fingertips forwards, up and back if you've got some space. Keep trying to draw the shoulders to the ears, pushing the hips forwards, rotating the pelvis backwards. It's almost like you're trying to straighten the spine by rotating your pelvis, but opening through the chest, reaching back. Exhale, hands down towards the mat. Inhale, plank. Exhale, last time, knees, chest and chin. Inhale, cobra. Exhale, downward dog. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, right leg high in the sky. Exhale, right foot forward, drop the left knee. Inhale, reach the hands forwards, upwards, and back. Be careful with your spine. You could imagine you're gripping a block. Bum cheeks are strong. Exhale, hands to the floor. Inhale, lift the back leg. Exhale, place the left foot down. And this might be the last time. Inhale, unroll, stand up. Exhale, bring the hands down by your sides. Mountain pose. Feel tall, feel engaged. Notice the change that's happened with your breathing, with your heartbeat, with your breath. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. As you exhale, step, float or fly, both of your legs back, Chaturanga. Inhale, upward dog. Exhale, downward dog. Right leg high in the sky. Exhale, right foot between your hands. Make sure there's hip width between your ankles. Lower your back heel and as you inhale, reach up. Warrior one. As you exhale, bring your hands together. Kali Mudra, your index finger points up towards the ceiling, the other fingers interlink. And now use that um, bind to really rotate open through your armpits. Really keep lifting the shoulders, showing to show your armpits out towards the sides. Bend your front leg, strong back leg. You're lifting your belly button and lowering your tailbone. With your bum turned on, you're trying to protect your spine. As you exhale, hands down towards the floor, right leg steps back into downward dog. Realign your feet, get comfortable in your downward dog. You can bend the knees if you need to, I want you to feel long through the front of your, your chest. Inhale, left leg up. Exhale, left foot forwards. Lower your back heel again. Pay attention to the width, the distance between your heels. And as you inhale your hands up, get comfortable in your warrior one. Any little adjustment, the right hip comes forward, the left hip comes back. With your next exhalation, hands together. Again, Kali Mudra. So your index ping finger points up, your other fingers interlink, and you open through your heart. You're lifting your shoulders and your hands go back. Don't collapse in your lower spine. Keep pushing the floor away with both of your feet. Let the breath flow.
If you want it a little bit strong, uh, lower your hips a little bit for a little bit more. Let your left knee go a tiny little bit further, further forward. As you exhale, hands down, and step that left leg back downward. Inhale, knees down towards the mat. And as you exhale, reach your hands forward up on your fingertips. Now I want you to try and keep your hips above your knees and I want you to gently melt your heart down towards the floor for bleeding heart purpose. So you push the floor away with your hands, helps keep your shoulders engaged. So not are you only getting stretch along the front of your body, you're also opening your armpits and strengthening your shoulders. You can look forwards if it feels comfortable, or you can look down towards the mat. But what I really want you to try and pay attention to is that you're feeling that soft, gentle, equal curve along your spine. You're not just collapsing at any particular point. You're feeling that nice, gentle bend from your hips all the way to the crown of your head. Stretching through the front of your chest for three, two, and one. Slow and steady, start to come back up, bring your hands under your shoulders. Inhale, downward dog. Exhale. With your next exhalation, bring both of your elbows and forearms down towards the ground. You're going to have the temptation that your hands come together, but try and keep your arms parallel. So we're in dolphin. So I really want you to push the floor away. You're trying to lift your hips. Your back is strong. If you feel like you don't get much stretch through the front of your chest, then walk your feet a little bit further forwards. Remember, you're trying to keep your back flat. Your head is not touching the floor. Try and feel engaged through your hands. Strong shoulders. Push the floor away. Keep engaged, stay strong. You're also stretching through the back of your legs. You can bend your knees a tiny little bit if you wish. I want you to really have that nice sensation along your back. That's the primary aim of focus, then the shoulders, and then eventually that stretch in the legs. Shoulders start to get tired. If they do, breathe out strong. And then hold for another couple of seconds. So now nice and gently, if you did walk your feet forward, step them back to where they were. And then slowly lift your elbows away from the mat and bring yourselves back into downward dog. Now from downward dog, Inhale, knees down towards the floor for all fours. And as you exhale, let the weight come backwards. Bring your hands by the sides of your shins or the outside edges of your feet to relax through the shoulders in child's pose. So you feel that your glutes are slowly sinking down in towards your heels. Your head just rests on the floor. Your belly button is coming down between the legs. Just take a few breaths. With your next inhalation, bring your hands back forwards once again. Exhale, get comfortable, little wiggle in the hips. Inhale, come up to all fours. Exhale, plank. Inhale. And as you exhale, gently lower your knees and your upper body to lay down on your mats. So I need you to be very careful in the next pose. I want you to be comfortable. Remember, no pain. So what I want you to start with is your, uh, your elbows in front of your shoulders and your hands spread. So you feel that you're just gently supporting the weight of your upper body, but you're not really lifting too much, just a tiny little bit. 
And we're going to start with the left leg. So I want you to bend your left knee and take hold of your left ankle with your left hand. Now what I really want you to do is try and bring that heel further in towards your glute. So there's a chance that you might be able to change the position of your hand so you can push the heel of the hand through the top of the foot and you'll get more of a sensation through your quadriceps. So when you think that you feel that you've got the biggest stretch in your quadricep possible through the top of your foot, remember you can hold your foot however is good, I want you to gently start bringing your elbow further back. So you can bring your elbow further and further back until you really start to get that big stretch in your quadricep. If you can't get your elbow far enough back to get that really strong stretch in your quadricep, you can also push the floor away and lift your upper body and then you really will get that big stretch in your quad. So remember, you can adjust the intensity in two ways. You can lift your upper body more, or you can bring your left heel further down towards your glutes. Do whatever works for you. Three, two, and one. Nice and soft. We're going to release. And once again, come back to that position where you had both of your hands a little bit further forwards. Do anything that feels good for your quad. You can rotate your ankles out towards the side. A little bit of massage in the knees if it feels nice. And now the other side. So this time, we're going to bend our right knee and take hold of our right foot. Remember, you can hold your ankle, or you can hold the top of your foot, or you can turn your hand to really push your heel in towards your glute, whatever feels good. Remember, no pain. Keep your bum turned up. And then from there, like we did on the other side, start sliding your elbow back until you get that big stretch through, the, through your hip flexor and your quadriceps. And if you get your elbow so far under that you feel that the elbow can't come back anymore and you've still not got a big stretch, you can straighten that left arm. Keep breathing. Three, two, and one. Gently lower your elbow. Release the foot, bring both of your hands forward once again, bring your elbows a tiny little in front of your shoulders, and now do whatever feels good for your hips, your ankles, your legs. Now bring your hands under your shoulders, and let your weight come backwards, and you can sit down on your heels. If your feet are off the back of the mat, then you can bring your feet a tiny little bit forwards if you wish. And now from here, we're going to sit out towards the left hand side. So your left bum cheek comes down towards the ground. And now we're going to cross the right leg on top of the left. If this feels too much, it's not comfortable for you, you can keep that bottom leg straight. Inhale that right hand up. And as you exhale, bring the right hand down the, by the back of your spine. Inhale, left hand up. And as you exhale, left elbow outside of your right knee. And now gently use the strength in your upper body to twist. Look over your right shoulder. Make your spine long. Breathe. You might feel cracks, you might feel clicks, adjustments along your spine. You might not. A couple more breaths. Inhale. As you exhale, start turning the head forward and then gently release the upper body and we're going to uncross that right leg. So now exactly the same but on the other side. So now we're going to come back towards the center and then this time we're going to sit down on towards our right bum cheek, on towards the right hand side. We're going to cross the left leg on top and push that left foot gently through the floor. Remember you've got the option to straighten that right leg underneath you if you wish. 
Nice, tall, long back. Inhale, left hand up. Think graceful, and as you exhale, circle backwards. Place that left hand down behind your spine. Inhale, right hand up. And as you exhale, the right elbow goes on the outside of the left knee. And you feel that twist. Long and stable. Every inhalation you can grow a little further. Every exhalation maybe you can twist a tiny little bit tighter. For three, two, and one. Gently, softly come back towards the center. Uncross your legs. And now slide your heels once again back under your glutes and we're back in hero pose where we were at the beginning of the practice. Now what I want you to feel is that your back stays as strong and as straight as possible and you feel how your pelvis rotates forwards to allow you to fold over your hips like a hinge. Reach your hands forwards and now let your weight come down to lay yourselves down once again on your belly. Now what I want you to do is I want you to place your hands under your shoulders. So we're going to be strong and I want you to lift your left leg away from the floor. Bend your right knee and place the sole of your right foot on your left quadricep. Bring your elbows in and now we're going to do some little push-ups. So you're strong. If it's uncomfortable on your knee, you can have a blanket or double your mat under your knee and push up. As you exhale, lower. Inhale up. Exhale, lower. Inhale, up. Exhale, lower. Inhale, up. Exhale, lower. Yoga's amazing, it's wonderful, but it's not magic. Inhale, up. You do need to work to get strength. One more time, inhale, up. Exhale, lower. And release the foot. Bring that left leg down, a little bit of a twist, a little bit of a rotation in your hips. Make sure there's nothing uncomfortable in your back. And now the other side. So strong back, lift this time your right leg and place that left foot on your quadricep. Bring your elbows in. If it's very difficult, if it's too much, you can try having your hands a little bit wider or a tiny little bit further forwards. Try what, whatever you do, try and keep your elbows in. So we inhale up. Exhale down, inhale up, exhale down. Try and keep your discipline, the elbows go backwards, you're trying to strengthen the muscles in your shoulders which will help in positions, in arm balance in positions and also in positions like wheel. Try and keep that back leg strong. One more time, come up. And as you exhale, this time lower. And then release that leg. Again, any little movement that feels comfortable for your hips, back, knees and legs. So we're going to come back to using our back a little bit more and think about opening through the front of our shoulders. So what I want you to do is I want you to bring your hands back and interlink your fingers above your glutes. Roll open through the front of the shoulders. And with your next inhalation, lift your head and your shoulders and your chest off the floor. Keep the bum strong, lift the legs. Lift the hands away from the glutes, rolling open through the shoulders. You should feel stretch across the front of your chest. No pain in the lower back. Strength, stress, tension now, now is fine, but no pain. If it's very uncomfortable in your back, you can spread your legs a little bit. If not, try and keep them together. Three. Two. And one, release, gently, slowly come down. Bring your hands under your shoulders. 
with your next inhale push yourselves up into plank and as you exhale downward dog With your next exhalation, soften the knees. As you inhale, you can step, float or fly your feet forwards and allow yourselves to come down into a seated position. So you can gently start to sit yourselves back, lay your spine down towards the floor, your shoulders and your head come down towards the mat. So I want you to have your feet separated at hip width along with your knees and I want you to feel that your feet are strong in the floor. So we're all going to come up into bridge the first time. So for a good bridge, I want you to use your hamstrings, I want you to use your glutes, and I want you to push your feet down through the floor to slowly lift your spine off the floor, vertebra by vertebra. Try and feel like your back rolls off the floor, it doesn't just lift in a big straight line. Now when your hips are up, you can bring your hands under your glutes and slide your shoulders under your chest. So with your shoulders under your chest, you really should get that strong sensation through the chest. Now what I want you to do is really fire on your glutes and notice what happens in your back. Then you can release and see what happens. So squeeze your glutes, squeeze, 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 and release. And notice if you can feel anything happening in your lumbar spine. So remember, these are the muscles that we're going to use when we come up into our pose uh, in wheel in a moment. Well, you can think about that any time you're doing a back bend. You want to keep the bum turned on. Three, two, and one. Gently, nice and soft, lower down. So every time we come out of a back bend, we don't want to come straight into a forward fold. You want to do anything that releases the tension, but not necessarily a forward fold. So now this time we're going to choose just a little rock out towards the left and the right with the knees. Bit of a twist in your spine. So now, when we come up into wheel, we're going to do it three times. Wheel is the kind of pose that generally gets easier um, the more open and the more stretched that you get. So the first time we're going to come up, we're going to hold it for five breaths, the second time for 10, and the third time for 15. If wheel is not part of your practice just yet, try the first time, see where you get, and then you can come down into bridge the same position that we just did previously, really thinking about trying to strengthen your back body to progress for wheel. So now, nice and gentle, bring your feet down towards the floor, same distance, same width as they were for bridge. But now the differences start. So what I want you to do is I want you to bring your hands under your shoulders with your fingertips looking towards your feet and your heels. So now with strong arms, you can lift your hips and now push gently through your hands to bring the top of your head towards the mat. Now from here you can have some weight through your neck. Be careful but you can support some weight in your neck so you can adjust your hands. And then from there find the strength not only in your arms and your shoulders but in your lower back to lift. Now if this is uncomfortable it might be more comfortable for you to bring your feet a little bit wider. Make, maybe come up onto your tiptoes. Do what feels good for your back. Remember your glutes are turned on to help protect your spine. This time is going to be short, just for five breaths. This is kind of our preparation. So you're feeling open, you're pushing the ground away. And as you exhale, gently start to lower head, shoulders, lower back, all comes down towards the floor, nice and gentle. And this time, to stretch out our back a little bit, we're going to bring our legs up towards the ceiling. Engage through your core, try and push your lower back into the mat, arms out towards the side at 90 degrees. So really point through your toes. Strengthening your front body. And as you exhale, gently bend your knees. Place your feet on the floor. 
And now again, we're going to come up into wheel. So if wheel, as I said previously, is not part of your practice, you this time come up into bridge or a modification of wheel, anything that feels good for you. So with your hands on the floor, lift your hips, tuck your head under, adjust your arms, make yourselves feel good, and lift. Now, if you're a little bit more advanced, you might want to walk your feet a little bit further in towards your hands. Remember to keep the glutes turned on to protect your spine. And breathe. You might want to gently move forwards and backwards, feel a little bit of movement in the pose. Remember that we are not statues. With your next exhalation, gently start to lower. Head and shoulders come down first and then all of your back slowly peels or places back down on the floor. And this time for our little uh, sort of counter pose, I want you to bring your legs up to 45 degrees and then gently sit up. Navasa. So it might not feel like much of a counter pose, it might feel as just as strong as wheel. But what we're doing now, we're engaging the front of the body and we're kind of opening out a little bit the back body. Doing some abdominal work is a great counter pose after any back bend. You can bend your knees if you wish. And nice and gentle, nice and slow. Allow your back to come all the way down. Last time, feet separated at the width of your hips. Bring your hands again under your shoulders. So your hands push through the floor and you lift your bum away from the mat. Slide your head between your hands, get comfortable, place your hands wherever feels good and then lift. Breathe, make sure you're open. This time if you wish to add some variations you could lift a leg up towards the sky. If you did lift the leg, you can lower that leg and we'll change side to the other leg. Keep rotating through the armpits, try and keep weight spread across all the palm and fingers of the hand. Lower that foot if you lifted a leg. Come up onto tiptoes, walk your feet a little bit further in towards your hand. Play, be creative, find your inner child. Three, two, and one. Slowly release. Lay yourself gently down. And this time, yes, we're going to bend our back a little bit more. So knees in towards the shoulders. Take hold of the outside edges of your feet for happy baby. Try and push your tailbone down so all of your spine is comfortable on the floor. Gently push out with your elbows on the inside of your knees to get the stretch open through the groin. If it feels good and you like, you can gently rock left and right. Massage your spine a little bit. People used to tell me to do this when I was first beginning on my yoga journey and it used to feel terrible, it used to feel like torture, this rocking left and right. But that was because I had my back curved and I didn't have much of my spine on the floor. So really try and make sure that you're drawing your tailbone down towards the floor to have as much as, as your back on the floor as possible. And then you really start to feel that massaging sensation when somebody so tells you that this should feel like a massage but you're in pain because you're rolling just over two of your vertebra. I totally get it, I totally understand, I've been there. But really work to try and keep all of your back on the floor, spread the weight evenly along your spine and it will feel good. So now come back up to, towards the center. 
And now, like I just mentioned, I really want you to keep your tailbone down and gently start to straighten your legs as much as you need to get a nice stretch in your hamstring. Push the heels away, keep holding your feet. Remember tailbone down. And in your own time, slowly start to bring your feet back towards the center. You can release the hands. Now with your knees above your hips, bring your arms up towards the side. We're going to go to the left first, so I want you to start to gently bring your knees down towards the left hand side. Try and keep your legs together, nice twist in the back. You may wish to bring your left hand on the outside of your right knee, and I want you to look over towards your right hand. So here you don't have to work hard, you can be relaxed, let the weight of your body do um, almost all of the effort. The only thing that I do want you to make sure that you're doing is trying to keep your right shoulder off, uh, sorry, on the floor. And you're breathing. Just let your spine get used to this new position, this new twist. Feel the gentle compression for your intervertebral discs. You could almost visualize, imagine that those discs are like a sponge. You're now squeezing them, you're moving the liquid and the chemical that you store along your spine. And with your next inhalation, come towards the center. Make sure that you feel your spine is in a nice straight line, and this time your legs out towards right hand side. So your knees stay together, you feel that nice twist in your back, right hand may be on the left knee, you might want to adjust your hips to make the twist more intense, listen to your body, and then to finish, look out towards the left hand. Super steady and super slow, come back towards the center. And now, if you follow my videos regularly, as per usual, I'm going to give you a little bit of time to do what feels good for you. So that might mean another happy baby, it might mean another twist, it might mean a headstand, it might be to go out and run a marathon, it might be to go and sit in an armchair and read a book, listen to what your body needs. Something that I do always definitely recommend is after doing a few little poses, a few little twists or stretches that feel good for you, is spend a few minutes in your position of final relaxation, be it child's pose, be it savasana, be it a seated relaxation or a, a seated meditation, anything that feels good. Make sure you get yourselves comfortable where you can disconnect a little bit your mind, let your body relax. From here on the sunny south coast of Spain, a very warm namaste.